Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the name of the living God. Hallelujah, God is good. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Angelic Inspired. If it's your first time joining me, watching me, listening to me, kindly subscribe to this YouTube channel so that anytime I upload a new video, you will be able to receive notifications. And thank you for all those who have subscribed already. God bless you. So today I want to talk about uh, a very, very important topic in our daily lives that help us. So I want to, our topic today, I want to talk about six ways how we attract demons in our lives. These are six ways how we ourselves we attract demons in our lives. So there are many ways that uh, people can use to attract demons into their lives, into their self, uh, or uh, uh, whatever they are doing, they involve demons. So these are things that anytime you do them, anytime you do them, you attract demons, you attract <clears throat> the powers of darkness, that they'll come and control your life. So number one, number one is negative speech. So negative speech, what do I mean when I talk about negative speech? Many people are fond of negative speech. You are, you are, you are talking, you are talking against yourself. You are talking against your child. You are talking against your husband. You are talking against your wife. These are negative speech. And this speech affects us in one way or the other. Because always remember, the Bible says in the book of Proverbs, God wants us about this. God wants us about this. And Proverbs chapter 18 verses 21 says that life and death are in the power of the tongue. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. And this means that anytime that we speak, anything that we speak out, or anytime that we open our mouth and we, sp we use our tongue to utter something and speak, if it is an evil thing, it will have effect. If it is a good thing, and that's why the Lord told Abraham that I will bless those who bless you and I will curse those who curse you. Because whenever you speak a blessing, the blessings will follow you. And anytime you speak of curses, curses will follow you. The tongue... The, the, the life and death are in the power of the tongue. So you choose what you want. So if you are always speaking death over your life, there are some people that even um, sometimes things are not working well in their lives. And then you find them talking negative things in their lives, like I'll commit suicide, I'll hang myself, or I'll do this and this, I'll do it, this and this. The moment you have opened your mouth and uttered that word, the enemy will be following up on that word until it comes to accomplishment, until he makes sure that you do whatever you said. If you say, you always tell people you will commit suicide, commit suicide. The enemy is always following that word until you do it. You do whatever you have been saying. So negative ne negative speech is very very dangerous and uh, anytime we speak of it we, uh, we we welcome the demons of the words that we sp we are speaking if you are talking of of uh, committing suicide every now and then you are inviting the demons of suicide if you are talking about uh, maybe doing something some some kinds of evil things maybe uh, stealing somewhere or even even uh, breaking other people's marriages, you, you, those are what you always pay, uh, talk. Then that spirit will come and dwell in you and it will make sure that you do, it will make sure that you do whatever you uttered. It will make sure that the mission is accomplished. Your mission is accomplished, whatever you wanted to do and whatever you were saying, it will make sure that you do it. So let us train our tongue and let us, uh, let us train our tongues and let us know what we are saying at what time and, uh, what do you mean as we are talking? Hallelujah. And so, and so that is a, something that we must be very careful of. So negative speech, avoid that as much as possible, especially when we are angry. You find that most of the time when we are angry, when we have been angered by somebody, we have been quarreling, we have been arguing, and then you find that, you find that uh, you start to talk you start to talk negatively you talk negatively you talk negatively either against the person against your husband or against uh, your spouse so those are things that th those are things that the lord doesn't love 
and they invite demons to come and make sure that the mission is accomplished. So, number two, number two, the things that attract demons in us is our dressing code. Dressing code. There are some dressing code, and we know them. We know them all over and everywhere. There are some dressing codes that attract demons to us. They attract demons to come and live in us. Like there are uh, sexy codes, sexy codes of dressing that are of this world. Because uh, most of the time we know the things of the world and we know the things that are not of the world. The God, the Lord has given us that wisdom. So there are the, the kind of dressing that you are, you are, uh, you ha- you, you are having a... You are having a dressing that uh, all your your private parts have been exposed, or uh, your body has been exposed. You are not covering yourself in a good way, especially for the women. Most of the time, especially for the women. But nowadays, even men are into it. So just be careful of your dressing code. The Bible warns us in the book of First Timothy chapter nine, First Timothy chapter two verses nine. If you read in the book of First. Timothy chapter 2 verses 9 the Bible says that I also want the women to dress modestly with decency and propriety adorning themselves so dressing code especially goes to the women but I can say 95% 95% of the dressing code goes to the women because uh, anytime a woman is a half naked she will lure many men into sin of admiring her so this this act of luring men into sin of admiring you you are half naked these are spirits that you are inviting and you will ha- find that you will not ha- find a serious man to settle down with you you will never find a good man to marry you and even if you get married you will have struggles in your marriage until you you, you will divorce your husband because there have been a, many spirits that are are dwelling in you the men that you are attracting on the way as you walk the men that are admiring you they are admiring you but this is something like a spiritual transaction that is happening because they are admiring you you will not you will not go with them physically you will you won't sleep with them but in the realms of the spirit they have admired you and what the you remember the bible also warns us about that so most of the time that you will be welcoming these spirits to dwell in you and they will be following you and every time you will want to dress that way the best today you 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 dressed above your knee tomorrow you will want to dress above above your knees and the other day the following day now above above you start from from shorter to shortest to as you continue so from short to shorter to shortest as you go so that those th- these things will be pushing you so it is not advisable for especially ladies, I will insist this, especially for the ladies who want to serve the Lord and for the ladies who are Christians, it is not good to put on uh, this dressing cords that are demonic, this dressing cords that are uh, are not pleasing the Lord, this dressing cord that are luring men to admire us. So it is good if we can we can uh, train ourselves on that and we will be on a safer side. And then number three, Number three is tattoos, tattoos. Nowadays we see tattoos everywhere and people have tattoos and uh, it's your choice to have tattoos. You can la- choose to have tattoos. You can choose not to have tattoos. But what does the Bible says about tattoos? Are they godly or are they are they things that pleases the Lord? What is the, what, what does the Bible say about tattoos? So about tattoos, first of all, Tattoos are not of God. God is warning against tattoos. God is warning against tattoos. So you find that. So tattoos, you find that uh, the Bible warns against tattoos. They are not of the Lord, and the Lord doesn't like tattoos. So whichever, whatever style you want, tattoos you want to make on your body, let me tell you that these tattoos, they have gone their signs and symbols. And every tattoo, each and every tattoo, there is a spirit behind it. There are some tattoos that whenever you, you, you put on yourself, you will find that you are just wild. You are just a wild person. You, you, you are fighting people all over. And some tattoos, the spirit of prostitution will never leave you. Some tattoos, you can never settle in marriage. Some tattoos, you can never settle in relationships. 
you are going on breaking the hearts of men and all uh, women these tattoos they have got their meaning so it is not just about tattooing yourself and also god and the word of god is against tattoo it it is not advisable for a christian to tattoo his body or her body even if it is in the Old Testament, but this is something that it is not acceptable. But suppose you have you have tattoos already right now and you are asking yourself, woman of God, what can I do? Because I have the tattoos already. Well, what you can do is very sim simple. You just pray a prayer of repentance and never add any tattoo on you again and tell God that, God, I did this unknowingly, but now there I have found an eye opener and uh, I can see that it is not right and your word is not uh, supporting this. So I repent of my sins and I will never do it again. And the Lord is faithful and just to forgive you. So that's what you will do. In the book of Leviticus chapter 19 verses 28, the Bible says that the Bible says that you shall not make any cuttings in your flesh. You shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, nor tattoo any marks on you. Don't make any cuttings for the dead on your flesh or even tattoo yourself. So the Lord and the word of God is warning against tattoo. So if you are just a, a, a child of God, a Christian who want to serve the Lord and do the things of the Lord, never ever put a tattoo on yourself. Stop it. It is not godly. It is a, it is something that it invites. It opens doors for other spirits to come and have dominion in you and even torment you and make things miserable for you and for your life. And most of the time, even if you check these people who have tattoos, most of them, you find that there must be something. There must be something that is not adding up in their lives because the, 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 the spirit of that tattoo but the spirit behind that tattoo is at work. So be careful with that. These are the things that attract demons into us. And then number four, is evil behavior or an evil habit or even a demonic habit. There are some people who have very, very dirty behaviors and these behaviors or characters or habit, they invite the demons to come and dwell in us and come and live in us. And these are things that we must be very, very careful. Our characters, the things that we are doing every day, the things that we love to do and the things that we, we want to do. So you find that you must be very, very careful because always remember that you are not your own you are not your own your body is the temple of the lord so you are not your own and so whatever you do with your body god is concerned god is concerned about it so this evil behavior that 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 uh, you find that um, somebody has a, a, a certain evil be behavior that he or she is trying to get rid of but is still continuing to do it so you find that uh, most of the time these things affect us in one way or the other, especially if it is a habit. You find that you can't have peace before you do that thing. You can't have peace with yourself. Like, uh, yes, I was talking to a certain lady. There was a certain lady who reached out to me and uh, she told me she, she is about 40 years of age and her husband left her. And she has children. So she was telling me that since her husband left her, it is over, it is, it is so many years now. It is many years right now since the husband left. And the lady is a church, is a church woman. She goes to church and uh, she loves church. So she was telling me that she don't, doesn't understand what is happening with her. Because anytime she try to fast and pray, she can even say that she want to fast for three days, like three days. So when she is fasting, she will just find herself, her, the, the, her body, the, the desires of the flesh exceeding her. And she will just find herself finding a way on, on how to... On how to on how to put off the fire on her body, the sexual desire. So she says that she, she has tried all means possible to overcome this, but it is, it, it is almost impossible. So you find that this is a habit. This is a habit that has grown in this woman. It has grown in her, and this habit is really tormenting her. And now she can't even stay with a man. Because he's used to that character. He's used to that, that, that behavior. So 
These are ki the kind of uh, behaviors that put us away from the presence of the Lord and invite demons into our lives. And uh, the Bible warns us against this. The Bible warns us against this. So we need to be very, very careful with the behaviors and the habits that we are uh, entertaining and tolerating because most of them are uh, inviting demons into our lives. And you find that they make our lives to be very, very difficult. And uh, the Bible warns us in the book of Galatians, Galatians chapter 5, verses 24, it says that those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh and their passion and desires. You find that once you are born again and you have chosen the Lord to walk in the ways of the Lord, now you crucify yourself. You crucify all your, your body desires so that you can focus on the things of the Lord. You crucify all the earthly desires, the body, the bodily desires, because most of them, these body desires, remember the Bible tells us that the body belongs to the world. And actually we normally see even when somebody, when a brother or a sister has departed, the body is going back to the dust. And so the Bible normally tells us that the body belongs to the world, but the spirit and soul belong to God. And now the body wants the things of the world, but the spirit and soul want the things of the, of the Lord. So the moment you can't control your behaviors, your desires, your, your bodily desires, your sexual desires, and you are just falling anyhow everywhere, it is not advisable. And also remember that it is, it is not good at all because it will defile you in one way or the other. So you must be very, very careful with your behaviors, with your habit, what you are habited to or what kind of behavior you have you must be very very sensitive and careful about this behavior thing because it will defile you and it will um, invite the enemies it will invite the demons into your life and you it will make your life difficult so you need to be very careful on that and then number five i'm almost winding up number five is exaggerating beauty exaggerating your beauty or even makeup some of them, I say some of them, not all, but some of them are very demonic and they attract evil spirit. For example, the Bible says that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. And even in the book of Psalms 139 verses 14, we are fearfully and wonderfully made. So if we are fearfully and wonderfully made, yes, we must continue to make ourselves beautiful. And as especially as a woman, you must continue to make sure that you look beautiful. You look representable. You look awesome. Even when you are going to people or even attending weddings, attending ceremonies, attending uh, invitations, you have been invited somewhere you want to go. You must look, make sure that you look re very representable. But now there is a problem with the exaggerating of the beauty. Especially, you find that uh, most of the things that uh, makes us even know to look worthy before the eyes of the Lord. You find that you have you 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 have yellow hairs, you have green hairs, you have blue hairs, you have a blue wig on your head, you have a a white wig on your head, you have a you have a, a red wigs on your head, and your nails are very very sharp pointed, very very sharp pointed, very very sharp pointed, and all, all over you, even uh, you, no one, no, even the people who know you, who knows you, they are being, they are confusing you with another person. They can't recognize you easily. You have your eyelashes are too long. I say too long. Your eyelashes are too long. Your nails are now the longest, the longest, and very sharp and pointed. Your nails now, and the hair is green, the hair is red, the hair is blue, the hair is purple, and you want to go to preach to people. Do you know? Do you think that the people will be listening to you, even just as you think, uh, as you digest on that by yourself? Do you think that people will listen to your preachings, or they will be just, they will be like, what is happening with this woman? What's wrong with her? Look at the nails, look at the hair, look at the eyelashes. Everything has been exaggerated. Just as you are using the makeup and making yourself representable, just let it be moderately. Let it be moderately. And if possible, we are fearfully and wonderfully made. They have no need in our life. They are just a little bit of a of modif modifying yourself but we are fearfully and wonderfully made meaning that the lord looked at us and said that we are perfectly made and there was nothing else that god had to add on making us because we we are beautiful we are beautiful already so 
so you find that we are beautiful already so you find that we need to be very very careful with these things and uh, and uh, we make sure that we just don't do them excess 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 of everything excess of everything is very dangerous because the bible says in the book of psalms 139 verses 14 that i will praise the lord for i am fearfully and wonderfully made marvelous are your works and you are and my soul know know it right so we are fearfully and wonderfully made and marvelous is the work of god so this time that you are exaggerating everything you are putting excess 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 of lipstick excess of eyelashes excess of eyeshadows excess of the wigs excess of everything excess of the nets everything excess 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 this is not advisable and it, it might seems it, it is might it might seems well in your eyes but even to the people that you are uh, you are uh, standing before them they will criticize you inwardly and this is not this is not advisable and so the last one number 6 is sexual immorality sexual immorality has been mentioned in very very many verses in the bible and sexual immorality is very very dangerous and why because the bible says that every other sin that a, a person commits is outside the body but sexual immorality is inside the body you sin against yourself you sin against your body and you sin against your soul you sin against yourself sexual immorality is very very dangerous so that's what the bible is warning us that sexual immorality that is now very very dangerous and we we should flee away from sexual immorality because it defies us. We are sinning against our body. We are sinning, sinning against ourselves, against our body, against our spirit, against our soul. Sexual sin is the only sin that is done against the body, against the spirit, against the soul. So, and that's why the Bible says that every other sin that a person commits, it's outside the body. But sexual sin you sin against your body and against yourself. So we need to be very, very careful with this thing because the Bible is warning us against it. And the Bible is telling us to flee away from it. In the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 18, it says that flee, flee from sexual immorality. All other sins a person commits are outside the body, but whoever sins sexually sins against their own body. So whoever sins sexually sins against his own body, but all the other sins that a person commits are outside the body. So ask yourself, are you going to sin against your body by just doing sexual immorality? Because this is very, very dangerous. So you need to run away and flee away from it, and the Lord will bless you. So my, my viewers and my listener, listeners, those are the six, the six things. The six things that attract demons in us. If we stop them, then it shall be well with us and things will be okay with us. May the Lord bless you wherever you are. Subscribe to this YouTube channel. Like, comment, share, 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 share. And the Lord bless you as you share in Jesus' mighty name. May the Lord bless you wherever you are. This is Angelic Inspired. Have a wonderful moment. Thank you very much.